bless your name today. Honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. Welcome to Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All things are upheld by the words of his power. Get ready to discover the laws that govern the kingdom of God and how those laws can be applied in your life through active faith. That is the picture of what God wants to do for you in your life. And now, Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. Your Bibles turn to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, and we'll begin reading at verse 16. Again, that's James chapter 5, we'll begin reading at verse 16. And it reads, Confess your faults to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man. The Amplified Classic, Classic Edition says it has tremendous power is available. Tremendous power is available. It accomplishes much. It accomplishes much. Let's go back. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man. The righteous. The righteous. In today's sermons, the Holy Spirit, he wants to identify what are, are the characteristics of a righteous man. The characteristics of a righteous man. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll begin reading at verse 19. It says, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them, and has entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The characteristics of the righteous. Right here, the word of God says that God who made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, if you notice, this is not based on what we've done. In fact, the scripture says earlier, earlier what we read, it says that God is not counting our sins against us. Now, we know in context, it's talking about those who are uh, have not been redeemed or those who have not made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. But let me share something with you. If he's not counting the person who's out there in darkness, if he's not counting their sins against them, then he's not counting our sins who have made Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior against us. He's not angry with us anymore. Remember the scripture in Luke, it says, uh, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. God is not angry with us. He's not holding our sins against us. So what does that mean? Once again, our righteousness is not based on our works, but is based on what Jesus Christ has done. The word of God says that he was made sin for us who knew no sin. And he gave us his righteousness. We can look at it this way. We were given righteousness when we didn't know anything about righteousness. We had no righteousness, but he gave us his righteousness. He took our sin. So once again, your righteousness is not of yourself. It's not based on your works. Is based on what Jesus has done. Now, why is this important to know? Because the enemy will always try to get you to focus on what you've done wrong. Condemnation, guilt, shame. 
But the word of God says you've been made righteous. You're the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. So. Am I going to focus on what I feel or the lies of the enemy or am I going to focus on what God's word has to say about it? God word, God's word says you're righteous. We're talking about once again the characteristics of a righteous man or the characteristics of the righteous. One, they know who they are in Christ because they have a firm foundation and understanding that they are righteous. Their righteousness is once again is based on what Jesus has done, not their own works. Once again, why is this important to know? Because when the enemy tries to beat our minds up, when he's firing those fiery darts to our mind, those thoughts, ideas and suggestions that say you shouldn't have done this. You shame on you. He's constantly trying to condemn you. You need to stop. Wait, no, no, no. First of all, the scripture says there is no condemnation for him who are in Christ Jesus. What am I doing? I'm practicing the word of God instead of my feelings. So once again, a characteristic one of the characteristics of a righteous man is they obey the word of God and believe the word of God regardless of what they feel. Regardless of what they feel. Now, let's look at something. Their righteousness is based on what the word of God says. The word of God has become their final authority. Let's look a little deeper. Let's, if you have Bibles, turn to 1 Peter 5. It says, 1 Peter 5 and 5 says, Likewise, you younger ones, submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you be submissive one to another and clothe yourselves with humility because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. It says, you younger ones, submit yourselves to the elders, or it could be those who are in authority. And it also says, be submissive one to another and clothe yourself with humility. One, another characteristic, characteristic of the righteous is they walk in submission to not only God, but those in authority, to their fellow man, and they are clothed with humility. Now, why is this important to know? Because the enemy has even infiltrated the church with this philosophy or this statement. I hear it all the time. I want to be my own man, my own boss. I don't want, I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. Now, you know, at first glance, because society, it sounds like that's OK. But let me share something with you. When I hear, especially, you know, a young man, a young lady make that statement, I already know that you have issues with authority. Oftentimes, if you see a young man, a young lady say something like that, watch their lives. Typically, they're the troublemakers. They have issues with authority. You know, it was at, you know, I used to see this with the young men. But now I'm beginning to see something different. I'm beginning to see the young ladies with these issues with and it's in their records. They'll, they'll say you know, they have issues with male authority. Now, to their defense. Oftentimes it's because of various reasons. It could be one could be. You know, like for instance, I remember talking to a, a parent of this young lady and the parent, she explained to me, well, her father is not in her life. And because her father did not keep his promises, she has such a strong hatred towards her father. And you, although you're not her father, but you represent that male authority. And that's why she has issues with you. It's nothing that you've done. She has these issues. There's another parent I remember speaking with her about her child's behavior. And she said, look, this young lady has been abused by either her father or those who were in the position like her father. So she has no respect or she has a guards up 
as relates to any type of male authority. Now, this is very dangerous. And you know, and those young ladies, I'm praying for them. But you know, this is very dangerous because, um, you know, I'm reminded of, um, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll tell the young people this, there was a popular movie back in the day, The Color Purple. And there was a character, and I believe her name was Sophia. Don't quote me on that, but I believe her name was Sophia. You know, in part of the movie, she's talked about how she had to fight her, her brothers and her fathers and her uncle. She had to fight all of her life. And so because of the things that was going on, you had an understanding why she was so feisty. But one day, she had a family. Now, we're talking about in the movie. She had a family. And one day she was in the market. They was, you know, in, in, in like, I guess, in a, somewhat of a, like the downtown area, if you will. And I think someone was trying to, if my memory serves me correctly, trying to kiss her children. But for whatever reason, she felt like they were trying to attack her children. And so uh, she hit someone and someone hit her. And the next thing you know, she was, they knocked her out and she wakes up. She's in jail. She has to ser serve this, this prison time for X amount of years. She's released, but you would think it would be over with, but no, it wasn't over. The person who she attacked or whatever, she had to serve them for a number of years. Submit yourselves one to another, to those who are in authority, as well as be clothed with humility. I remember in the story, where her, her, the person she was serving, now, you know, they got her both ways. If you want to talk about double jeopardy, I mean, she really paid a price in the movie. Well, one day, her, 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 uh, the woman who she was serving said, you know what, I'm gonna, for Christmas, I'm going to take you to see your family. And she was excited. But when she took the character to see her family, uh, she dropped her off and said, I'll pick you up at such, such, such time. But it was interesting. She was trying to, the, the lady was trying to drive, she had issues driving the car. But if you remember the movie, she couldn't get, she was trying to get out, but, and some people was trying to help her. Long story short, she didn't trust anyone but the person, Sophia, to drive her back. So Sophia, although she just dropped her off, Sophia had to drive her back during Christmas time. Now, this is just a movie, but you know what? I've seen this thing happen in life all of the time because the person didn't humble themselves. Life humbled them. In some situations is they, they because the person didn't humble themselves. They got in all type of trouble. The word of God says, submit yourselves to God. Submit yourselves to those in authority or your elders. Submit yourselves to one to another and be clothed with humility. Now, let me say this. You submit to authority even, guess what, when authority is wrong. I know you'll be, you may be thinking, now, brother pastor, you've gone too far. No, if they're wrong, I'm going to tell them that they're wrong. Well, let me share something. You're out of order. Let me say it another way. If you're a parent and you've had a child, there's been some times where you may have said and done something that was wrong to your child. But you know what? You would not take your child telling you that you're wrong or act out against you when you are wrong. Why? Because that was disrespectful. The same holds true when you're on your job. You know, oftentimes we want grace. We want grace when we're in authority. But sometimes we don't want to have grace with someone when they're in authority. Can I share something with you? Your boss is human. They're going to make a mistake. You know, sometimes, you know, they may make the mistake and it may be intentional. But you know what? You still have to give them the respect that God placed them in position. You must respect authority and submit yourselves. Guess what? Even when they're wrong. If not, guess what? No one will be deserved to be in authority because guess what? We all make mistakes. So you never want your mistakes to be or, or, or you... Let me say it this way. You never want your submission to a, per, to a person be based on whether they do it right or wrong. Just like your righteousness is not based on whether you do things right or wrong. 
is based on what Jesus has done. Characteristics of the righteous. I've seen this play out in other areas. You know, when we have a submission problem, once again, it, it always plays out. Let me say it this way. A few months ago, we gave a definition to the kingdom. The kingdom is a series of laws that supersede the earth curse system of painful toil and sweat. When you choose not to submit according to the scriptures or obey the word of God, you open yourself up to the curse. The curse and all of its derivatives, sickness, disease, lack, poverty, death. You don't have good relationships. Why? Because you're not following, you're not submitting to the word of God. You're not submitting to those in authority. You're not submitting to your fellow brothers and sisters. You're not clothed with humility. Where once again, we're talking about the characteristics of the righteous. You're not clothed with humility. You know, uh, I was talking with this, with this, with this guy and he was sharing some information about, you know, homeless. And, and, and he opened my eyes to some things I really didn't know. And he said, you know, there's a lot of homeless people that's out there. They don't have to be homeless. They're homeless by choice. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, and he said, a lot of times this, this, the, our veterans, some of them fall in this category. And he said, well, you know, they need help, but they have programs out there for them where they will help them uh, get a place to stay, help them with this and that, but they do not want to follow the program or the protocols. And so they say, you know what? I don't want to do any of this. Send me my check and I'll just be homeless. In other words, he said they know they have the, the Salvation Army. They have different places they can stay, but they don't have a house or a place to stay of their own. And he said that they will take their check and they will spend it up lavishly for a week, stay in a hotel and then go out and do the same thing and ask, go to this soup kitchen, do this and that, that. And he said there's a lot of people, not only veterans, but a lot of them, they live that lifestyle. And and you ask the question, why do you do this? Because they say the same thing. I don't want anyone telling me what to do. I don't want anyone telling me what to do. They refuse to submit to authority or submit to their brothers and sisters. They're not clothed with humility. You know, a few weeks ago, I talked about this. This idea, I'm, I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. I'm my own boss. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do, tell me how to act. I would just want to do my own thing. Y'all, this right here is not from God. A few weeks ago, I talked about Mozart. Everyone in Europe during this time wanted him. The aristocracy, the aristocrats, they all wanted him because he was an awesome musician, but he adopted the way of this new philosophy during that time. We're talking about mid-1700s of democracy. He could have gone once again to any king or queen to be their musician under, it was called the patronage system, where basically he would have lived a lavish life. But instead, he said, no, I don't want to do that. I want you to buy from me. You can commission me to do work, and that's how I want to operate. Well, long story short, he didn't get many commissions. And he lived a life of poverty, sickness, He had syphilis because of the lifestyle he was living and he was blind and he died at an early age of 35. Now, this is the kicker. (laughs) The enemy all has all kind of tricks for you. The whole world enjoyed his works. He had over 600 works. The entire world enjoys his works. But he didn't enjoy any of the fruit of his labor. Humility. Submit yourself. The way was paid for him, but he wanted to do things his own way. And he paid the price for it. You know, 
I'm reminded of Satan. What do you mean? He wanted he no longer wanted to serve. He wanted to do everything his way. He wanted to his throne to be 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 like the most high God. He wanted to take over. Now, isn't it interesting, this mentality of I want to be my own boss, my own ways, I want to do things my way, is quite different from the Lord Jesus Christ. The word says, listen, Jesus didn't come to be served, but he came to serve others. Submit yourselves to authority. Submit yourselves one to another. Be clothed with Humility, the word of God says he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble, but resist the proud. Now, let's look at these examples given. This mentality of I don't want no one to tell me what to do. I want to be my own boss. You know, that, you know, it's acceptable in society, but I can tell you that that thought does not come from God. That thought does not come from God, but it comes from the evil one. I want to be my own boss. Now, let me share something with you. Have you noticed those who God put in authority, oftentimes they didn't have a desire to do that. They're doing it because God told them to do it. God called them to do it. And when God calls them to do something great, oftentimes they go through a lot of things in life that God calls them to to develop them so they can rule with righteousness. If you look in the word of God, David, Joseph, look at the things they went through. Now, they didn't want to be in command. God called them to do that. But if you look at people who always want to be in authority, or they want to be their own man. Let me tell you something. A lot, a lot of times people that, that have that mentality, I don't want to work for them. Because you know what? They're not going to rule in righteousness because you know what? They already have themselves on their mind. They always want to be the man. They always want to be the root. They don't want anyone telling them what to do. Let me tell you something. God can't help that person. What do you mean? If they were placed in authority, if God, because oftentimes, let me, well, let me say it this way. When you're in authority, the answer doesn't always come to you, go, come through you. God will send people your way to help you. That's how God operates. There is no man that's an island. He will send people your way to help you. And if you reject their knowledge of their wisdom, guess what? Either you won't be there long in rulership or guess what? That whatever you're ruling is going to crumble. It won't work because you're so small in your thinking. Let me tell you something. This idea, once again, I want to be my own boss. I don't want anyone telling me what to do is dangerous. It's from the wicked one and you're not fit to rule. These are some hard lessons. I know it's hard, but this is from the Holy Spirit. That ideal does not come from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is humble. In fact, The word of God says, my yoke is easy and my burden, they are light. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If we continue reading, it says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due timing. Listen, the word of God tells you to humble your own self. See, a lot of people want God to do it. No, God's not going to do it. You have to do it. So let's look at this. We're talking about characteristics of the righteous. First of all, they understand who they are in Christ and they understand they're righteous because of what Jesus has done, not by their works. Two, they submit themselves to authority, to their brothers or sisters, and they're clothed with humility. The word of God says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he's going to exalt you. Now, this is the next point. It says, cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. If you notice the word God says, cast all of your cares. Cast all of your cares. Now, oftentimes, 
you know, we can read that scripture and say, yes, Lord, you know what? I'm, I'm going to cast all these cares on you. And you know what? We may do some. But what about those issues that you may have? Those habits that you have? Those habits you've been trying to break for decades? What about the secret sin in your life that you don't want anyone to know about? Those are cares. You've tried to overcome those cares once again for years, but you notice you hadn't been able to do it because you're trying to do it in your own strength, through your faith, through your own righteousness, and you can't do it. You may be successful for a little while, but if you notice, it always comes back. Why? Because you're trying to do things in your own strength. The word of God says, cast all of your cares, including those that you can't just seem to break those habits, cast all of those cares over on the Lord because he cares for you. You have not been built to carry the care that you have, including the ones that you don't want anyone to know about. Cast them over onto him. When you cast the cares, and now because we're, we're about to go into spiritual warfare now, understand when you cast the cares over onto him and you make a conscious effort, God, you know what? I've tried my way for decades. I, I cannot beat this habit. This has seemed to be bigger than me, but I know it's not bigger than you, God. So, God, I submit my cares. I cast the care of this thing over on to you. So how do you cast the care of this over on the Lord? I'm so glad you asked. Anytime that thought comes to your mind, you cast the thought down. Cast down every vein and wicked imagination or high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. Every time the thought of doing that or it, you cast the thought down. Now, when you cast the thought down, you need to say something out of your mouth. What does the word have to say about it? I will live and not die. We bless your name today, honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. This has been Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We pray that you continue to gain more insight into God's Word as Dr. Meredith shares the good news of the laws that govern the kingdom and how those laws can be applied through the active faith in your life. The Living the Abundant Life Christian Center is located in Little Rock, Arkansas at 8923 Sunset Lane, directly behind the Dollar General. You are invited to join us each Sunday at 11 a.m. for Sunday School and again at 1145 where you will enjoy a powerful worship service. Remember to tune in to KJBN 1050 a.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. as Dr. Meredith encourages us with Bible-based laws that will help us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. Please send all correspondence to the address on the screen and we thank you for watching Living the Abundant Life with Pastor Samuel Meredith. We magnify your name, we glorify, and we lift up our hands to the Lord.